Okay, so what the hell do we have here? This is a M18 Fuel Milwaukee bandsaw. It's actually not in this box. I've already unpacked it. It's over here hanging on the side of this uh, toolbox over here. But I figured that, you know, spent the money on it, new tool. You know, I think I paid a little less than $300 for it or some shit. Might as well give my input on it for anybody out there that thinks they may want be interested in buying one and so let's get this one off over here take a look at it real quick before we actually use it i already took the time where the hell am i gonna okay well this is the underside of it but so i already took the time i'll keep that up to uh install the blade because I did not know this when I purchased it but they do not come with the blade installed or and so I actually had to watch a YouTube video or a couple YouTube videos to figure out how to get the blade installed just because one of them was only like 30 seconds long dude breeze through it real quick I found one that was like five minutes long that explained it a little bit better but I mean it was pretty simple the only thing that I ran into so like a, when you're installing the blade, originally, let me flip it over actually. So this right here, this is just for you to hang it on something for storage. Flip that down. But uh, this right here, this is the lock that uh, provides torque on the blade or tension on the blade to lock it in place and hold it tightly. And so it, it arrived with it in this position. The instruction manual, which is not worded the best, which is why I reverted back to YouTube to check a few videos to see someone actually doing it because after watching a few videos, the instruction manual made sense, but just after reading the instruction manual, it's kind of confusing until you see someone do it. But what you gotta do basically is uh, also when this ships, this arrives right here. Oh, I'm gonna try to do this one handed. This is up, so it shows up with that up, that down, no blade. But um, to install it, basically, what you gotta do is you gotta unlock it. I'm not gonna actually do it because I got just got the blade installed in there. But you gotta flip this, and this is all. Oh, before I do this, it's probably best because there is a little bit of variance between the different models. This one is the Milwaukee Fuel Deep Cut version. I don't know if there's a... Right there, there's a serial number or a model number, right? if that helps anybody. But, uh, yeah, because I've, after watching a couple of those videos, people that had older models, some with cords, some that weren't the fuel version, whatever, the location of the tensioner right here and other features are not always identical but for this particular model you got to flip this up or to the left to let off the tension to wrap the blade up on the underside i was struggling with it for about five minutes until i realized that when i flip this over it wants to it, it's almost like a rifle trigger where you get a little bit of play up until it clacks off and then you get that little bit of play back into the reset. It turns over and it just stops. And I struggled for like five minutes trying to get the blade on. And then finally I figured out that I had to put a little bit more oomph into it to get it to go all the way. Cause originally it was just turning like that. And I had to get it to where it was going to a way my wrist doesn't want to fucking go where it was almost going like that. But then yeah, once I figured that out, it was super easy to get the uh, blade installed there. You just, I mean, which I didn't even take the time to put any gloves on at the time I had a long sleeve work shirt on because you gotta kind of apply pressure to one side while you're trying to kind of finger the other side through. You gotta focus on getting it in between these little roller bearings here and make sure it's up in between that guard up there and since the uh, 
blades, you know, got some spring tension on it. The way I went about doing it when I had a long sleeve shirt on is I just kind of wrapped it around one side and then just would lean my arm on it, holding it in there while I used, which I can't do because I'm holding the phone right now, but I would use my other hand to kind of, you know, line all that shit up in there. Once I figured out what the fuck I was doing, it was a breeze. But okay, so aside from that, they also say, oh, one more note. They also, uh, things that I read and I think someone in a video had mentioned is that you don't have to get the blade perfectly aligned up in there on everything. I mean, I'm a little bit OCD, so obviously I tried to get it as close to where the blade, as you can see, it was kind of almost flush with the rubber on that part right there, all the way around of it on both sides. You know, right there, you can see that size a little bit lower, but it's pretty close. But um, they say that even if you're off a little bit, that once you go to turn it on, obviously you don't have it at the highest speed, but uh, when you give it a little bit of power and juice, it will kind of correct itself. But I also noticed before I even put the battery in it to apply power, it was kind of crooked a little bit up here and I wasn't even trying to do this but I was just like huh and I just lightly touched it and it snapped in place so like obviously somewhere in there there's some there's something going on within this that it can kind of it, it, there's only, I don't know if it's a groove in there or some way to kind of hold it in a, a you know some sort of a tolerance of alignment but in between just you know giving a little bit of pressure there and then they say, you know, once you give it some juice, it'll kind of self-correct. And because whenever, before I put the pressure up there, the tiny bit that I did and it snapped in place, down here, the blade right here that actually does the cutting portion was a little bit kind of crooked to one side. And one side had touched that and it went pop. It automatically just straightened itself out there. But okay, so uh, that's basically that. Let me, I'm gonna get a battery thrown in this. And then I uh, guess I'll film some cutting a couple things just so y'all can see how this works, see if it's worth the money or whatever. See if you're interested in it, shit like that. I will, um, I will say there's one thing that did kind of i was questioning it and i'm just going to kind of run with it and see how it goes before doing anything big about it but i noticed that after letting it run for a little bit let's just listen real quick you hear that little noise at the end after the blade stopped moving it's like a <laughs> I'm trying to wonder what the fuck that could be because I mean it's a brushless motor in there and I mean I like I said I paid just under $300 for this I don't I I didn't pay for an extended warranty because I never fucking do but um yeah I'm kind of a little bit concerned about that I've never used one of these in any other time so I don't know if that's a common thing I wouldn't think it is having you know use Milwaukee drills and other tools but I'm gonna it, it you know it looks it looks damn good especially coming from fucking Amazon but uh so I'm gonna give it a go and just see how it works cutting a few things and if I'm not happy with it then somebody will be getting a boot up their ass and I'll be getting my money back but yeah, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna cut here, which this is gonna seem kinda fucking pussy, cause it's just so small for what this is, but the fact is I just need to, I actually need to cut this to use it for something. But I'm gonna cut this little piece of steel right here about 
and just shortly after where that little yellow line right there is off. And this, I have no idea what kind of steel it is. It was once part of a uh, machinist square, like the bottom or no, it would have been the vertical portion of it. Well, no, that's not what that was. This is actually, this is a, this has got to be some kind of carbon steel from a uh, track supply actually. I, it looks similar to a bent old machinist square that I boshed up with the Dremel to reuse some of the material from it from because it was just so jacked up. But uh, yeah, this, this should just be some high, <clears throat> high carbon steel, like weldable stuff from tractor supply. I, I'm not sure whether they're selling like a36 or 1018 or whatever i just I, I just like i said it's just like some scrap i had laying around but let me get the phone set up we'll see how this cuts off just a little chunk there and then after i get done with this i'll uh give it a shot at you know cutting up some of that longer aluminum stock back there just so you can kind of see how how this shit functions Okay, now I don't even think the manual really gave specifics on the what the settings the, the one through little five wheel right here. I don't even think it says what those relate to as in actual RPM. So I'm just gonna try this since it's steel on setting two and see how it goes. noise at the end still but we'll see I'll have to dig a little deeper to see what if I can find anything out about that I just I get tired of buying fucking shit online and having to go through the process of turning it like probably haven't had to in a while but there was a period where I was having to do that like once a week at least it seemed like for like a month straight and it just I just want this thing to fucking work at least for a couple of years until I upgrade to a bigger space and get a real bandsaw but okay I gotta do this the other side too so do I wanna yeah I'll just keep on the same setting that worked good enough Once again, as you can see, my aim was a little bit crooked as it came out of more of some kind of trapezoid looking shape, but function wise, I really can't complain. It, it was pretty quick. Other than that weird noise at the end, I mean, it sounds like it's running good while it's running. It's, you know, you can clearly tell if you can see that or not, but uh, I mean, it looks like a clean bandsaw cut there. It's not super jagged yeah okay well um yeah let me get some of this aluminum put up in here and i'll cut a chunk of it off and we'll see how it works in aluminum
Okay, so I got the aluminum in there. I guess being that it's aluminum, I'm just gonna, since we're still kind of playing around with this, I'm just gonna kick it up one notch to set you for speed three. Let's see how that feels. It really doesn't seem any different, but okay, we're gonna run with that and see how it goes. Gonna cut that all the way off because I don't want it to just drop and hit the floor because once again I got to use that for something and as you can tell I obviously was kind of pitched up a little bit too high at the beginning and probably could have tightened it down a little bit more and was getting a lot of vibration just in the vise and this wobbly ass thing it's mounted to there but once I kind of leveled it out yeah it was working real good there it was a uh, Definitely next time I cut aluminum with it, I'm gonna kick it up to the highest setting because I feel like that could have gone a little bit faster, but I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'll uh, get that last little bit off with a little hacksaw or a Dremel or something where I can actually hold this and not have to do it with, you know, this kind of requires two hands, something I can hold it and not get that drop there. But yeah, I'm happy with it. I think it's a good tool.